Members, kindly unmute your mics. Mute your mics. You're supposed to be going, coming in a, in a muted mode so that you don't interfere with the background. I'm waiting to see Vera. Is Vera in? And somebody by the name Phantom. Yeah, Vera is not yet in because I can see everybody coming in. All right, somebody has raised his, uh, his or her hand here. Let me see who's there. Vera is there. Oh, Vera is back. So Vera and Lipsy have a question as we wait for Phantom. So Vera, can you ask a question? Vera, the stage was yours. Okay, I'll give it, okay. I will give it to Lipsy. Lipsy. Good evening. All right, you're here. All right. Good evening, Lipsy. No, 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 no. That is Vera. Oh, that's Vera. <laughs> oh, Vera, I'm seeing yes. you. Yes, Wasonga, uh, Doctor Wasonga, I have a couple of questions for you. One. Yeah, just. Uh. uh when we came for the computations the other time, SRC gave us a semi, 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 how can you put it? They were not really the beacons that we needed. They could not even explain their work. Are they trying to tell us that they are coming to give us a new beacon so that you can try to feed uh, each and every person to the 8.8 .8 billion? Or are they trying to tell us, take the 8.8 .8 billion and go and do the normal distributions that you've done before? Second question. Uh, when is the next uh, when is the next job evaluation that will guide us to the 2021-2025 CBA? Because you've talked about uh, you having the documentation of the 2021-2025 CBA. Are you through? Yes, I'm done. Mm, I'm happy that you are there. And members can now attest that the calculation of, uh, let us say, 13.82 billion, we calculated it with the guidance of SRC technical team. As we speak now, SRC has given new beacons. And that's the reason why I impressed upon IPCCF to convene Joint Implementation Committee next week. So that we try to simulate what they are saying with the 8.8 .8 billion. And I want members to know, mm -hmm. according to SRC, mm -hmm. I like reading things, according to SRC that I have on uh, the report that they presented in court, that is page six, the salary movements are implemented horizontally as indicated in notch one for all notches. This methodology compensates for salary review and amounts to a maximum of 8.8 .8 billion. If you check our CBA, what do they mean by the salary review is schedule one. We have schedule two. Schedule one was the salary review for job evaluation. That is what SRC says should cater for 8.8 .8 billion. What we should not forget is that we developed Schedule 2. The Schedule 2 now get factors in the annual increment, which SRC is saying that the annual increment, let me read to members what they are saying on their letter of uh, 13th. 13th of January this year. They are saying that the annual increment should be sourced through the normal budget process. So, therefore, it means you cannot say that the entire CBA is 8.8 .8 billion, and at the same time, say that there's money to be sourced through the normal budget process. 
don't know whether I'm the one who is not understanding this thing. They're saying the cost of the CBA, the total cost of the CBA is 8.8 billion. Wasoka, can I interject? Can I interject? My, my, actually, I think you've not understood my question. Mm. Uh, let me refer to the meeting we had in December on, on 23rd or there about December. Yes. Mm. They, were, they were trying, SRC was trying to force us to actually map our workings to 8.8 .8 billion. Then they gave us like a methodology of giving us a percentage of the money that uh, I think got, got us to 6.6 .6 billion or thereabout. My question was, is SRC trying to push us to take the 8.8 .8 billion so that we can distribute it to, uh, amongst ourselves, amongst the, uh, the whatever members of uh, uh, whatever university staff? That's the question I ask, because I'm spelling that's actually what is happening. Because you see, after the meeting we had on 23rd, they never actually came out clearly on what they wanted us to do. Now, so there, there's another is. question. Just a minute. There's another question mm. again. I've just remembered. Mm. Uh, before, the, the previous CBA, you remember Kusu played us. Kusu mm. ran away with a, a lot of money. What, is a, what mechanisms have we put in place? Because you see, at the end of the day, these computations will be implemented by Kusu guys, the finance guys. What mechanisms have we put in place so that the finance guys don't run away with our monies? I'm done. Let us do this, Vera. Yes. I like referring to documents, and I want okay. to read the SRC document of 13 January 2020, at mm. paragraph 2. Mm -hmm. The total allocation of 8.8 .8 billion mm. should be arrived at by direct mapping of current salary points for respective grades to the advice salary structure for each year of the CBA. Salary structure, get salary structure. That is the structure that they developed. The structure that developed amounts to 8.8 .8 billion. Then when I move to paragraph two, automatic annual increment be implemented through the normal budgetary process and should not result in double compensation during the implementation of the CBA. So from there, you can realize that the 8.8 .8 billion is for the salary structure that they developed. Then universities through the Ministry of Education is supposed to source for the automatic annual increment. Which universities are not coming out clearly to tell us that they have sourced for it. And that's the reason why we are in court. Because the judge asked them, where is automatic annual increment? And I want to read the beacons for members to hear the beacon that they gave us when we were negotiating. Public service employees, including universities, mm. staff are generally cushioned against effect of deflation through the automatic annual increment on the basic pay, which mm. is to be loaded prior to the implementation of the new salary structure. Mm -hmm. Are you getting it? Yes, I'm getting so it. We have, we have two components here. Mm. We have the salary structure mm. that was developed by SRC, mm. which is supposed to consume 8.8 .8 billion. Mm -hmm. Then we have automatic annual increment that mm -hmm. is supposed to be loaded prior mm -hmm. to the salary structure. Okay. IPCCF and the government is mm -hmm. not telling us mm -hmm. the cost of this automatic annual increment and how mm -hmm. universities are going to source for it. Okay. All right. Are you ready? Now? All right, Vera. Just Vera. a minute. I'm, I'm not yet done. Vera, we I'm are limited done. Of time. <laughs> Kindly add me more time. Because even my, 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 my the two, two of my questions have not been answered. Vera, one Indeed. minute. One minute and then yes, one, one minute. minute for that. Yes. The, 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 the other question was, for, mm. for clarity of the question you've been answering, I'll get it, or I'll get it in Nairobi. Now, the, the other question was, how have we cautioned ourselves against the, the Kusu guys messing us up like they did in the other CBA? Because you see, at the end of the day, they're the ones who are going to do the, the, whatever the implementation. Then the other, the other question you, you've not answered, when is the next uh, job evaluation that will give us oh. the beacons for the 2021-2025 CBA? I'm done. Okay. Oh, we better get it like this. You know, as a yes. union, we don't, we don't control job evaluation. Okay. I think two, week, two weeks ago, you saw the chair of SRC was before the budgetary committee. Yes. She was complaining about uh, funds. Mm -hmm. And uh, the lady said that the government has not allocated funds to the commission for them to do job evaluation for 2021-2025 CJ. Mm -hmm. That one is not a function of the union. 
that okay. is a function of SRC and government. Okay. Two, the reason why we put the National Implementation Committee in our national CBA, this clause has not been there, is because we realized that once CBAs were negotiated and they went, universities were left to implement them on their own, mm -hmm. universities were implementing the CBAs, interpreting the CBAs differently. Mm -hmm. That is why since I took over this office, I introduced this clause where we congregate one place, calculate, interpret the schedules, calculate areas for each and every member, huh? mm -hmm. so that mm -hmm. I send it to chapter secretaries so that they monitor. You'll realize that we have two steps. We have the National Implementation Committee where we interpret mm -hmm. the CBA. Mm -hmm. Then there's the chapter we've mentioned committee. Once we have done it at the national level, mm -hmm. I take what we agreed to chapters mm -hmm. for the chapter to form the chapter we mentioned committee, which comprises of the chairman of, uh, of the chapter, chapter mm -hmm. secretary, mm -hmm. and a member plus three technical committees, so that you monitor that the CBA is negotiated mm -hmm as was interpreted by the National Implementation Committee so that our members are not so, so changed at the chapter mm. level. Okay. Mm. Okay, I'm okay. done. More clarity in yeah. Nairobi. Yeah, All right, uh, let me have uh, Phantom. Phantom, what is your name? Phantom is a phone hour. This is uh, Mr. Mesh Onyabu. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Odora, how are you? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, go ahead. Please. One, one minute. Okay, thank you. Thank you, engineer, for setting us up. Eh? Now, uh, it is, I have uh, one question on uh, this thing. Uh, you know, we have always said that uh, we are negotiating mm. with uh, several people who are among us. Sometimes there is something called vice chancellor's committee. There is uh, IPUCCF, then there is uh, the minister and whatever. Uh, but we have always uh, insisted that uh, if we could have a body that is uh, recognized by a constitution, we could be in a position to negotiate better and we cannot be under the mercy of these people. And I thought that uh, this was the opportunity, the BBI thing, since it seems to be uh, what uh, we are being told is going to do the magic, that we had the opportunity to insist we have a body like the TSC or the Lecturer Service Commission, which can take care of our interests, strongly angered in the Constitution. Are you doing something about it? And uh, there is also something about, uh, they, they set up something called the university funding thing. Uh, what is its function? And uh, how is it that uh, it is silent when we have universities sinking? Uh, we are being told they don't even have money to implement the annual increments. Is this university funding whatever functional? Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Terry. Uh, I really appreciate that. I want to say that if you read uh, our paper that we presented before the BBI, what you are proposing is uh, one of the issues that we presented because we wanted a body that could manage recruitment, promotion, or even appointment of lecturers. And we proposed that. And I want to say that we are going to emphasize. Because this IPCCF, it is amorphous because it does not have funds on its own. You negotiate with a body that does not have power. After negotiating, you agree. They go to the ministry. Hmm? They are at the ministry. They don't even want to appear there. I, I want to tell you. The, these people, we call, uh, we call them what? Council chairs. They cannot even go to the ministry and request for funds. There's also another Mofas body that is interfering. 
the vice chancellor of the committee. This vice chancellor of the committee is not even known anywhere in law. Huh? There's no way. Sometimes some, it's not known anywhere. Sometimes they even usurp the role of IPCCF. So I concur with you that those issues need to be addressed so that we don't have this merry-go-round where we negotiate with the, we call them DDCs. Then the DDCs go to negotiate with the vice chancellors. Vice chancellors negotiate with the vice, uh, with, with the chair of council. Chair of council go to the ministry. There's another one that now has been introduced, SIC. So we cannot negotiate. That is the reason why our CBS are always delaying. Correct. And I want to say that as a union, we are going to take what you are saying seriously. When I appeared before the Parliamentary Service Commission, no, Parliamentary edu Parliament, uh, Education Parliamentary Committee, we proposed this. Mm -hmm. uh, I want also to say, Ms. you asked, the second question was what? Uh, about they have they had a university funding something which I yes. remember this, this university this university funding board uh -huh. you know when it was formed I wrote to the university funding board mm. getting even where this university funding board where it is domiciled even at the Ministry of Education is not known when we took the letter there they could not mm. tell us even the office for this university funding board. As I speak, I don't know about their own. This university funding board, which university does it fund? What are these functions? Huh? You know, That's we it. have machines in the universities act that do not even make sense. As I speak now, Mesh, I want to tell you, your university is in a mess. I saw in the newspaper when they were requesting for a loan from a bank. Correct. Very soon, I'm sure they will not even be able to pay salary. What right. these universities need, they need a bailout. Because mm -hmm. if you check the seven big universities, that is the University of Nairobi, Moi, KU, J Quad, Maseno, and Masile mm -hmm. If you read the auditor's report, they are technically insolvent. Yeah. Yeah. And what the CS tells them is that they should generate their own funds. How mm -hmm. can you generate your own fund huh, while you don't even have facilities? And they so have never I'm told saying, you to do that. What I'm saying, <laughs> may I yeah. do this? Mm -hmm. The problem we are in is the creation mm -hmm. of the vice chancellors. When these people were getting module two money, they didn't mm. want even the union to know what they were collecting. Now that SSP is dwindling, now they want the union to help them. Uh -huh. So what we are saying, first of all, let them declare what this small that they are collecting so that we can know huh? mm -hmm. the balance they need. But mm. I'm sure in your university, Lecturers at KU never benefited from SSP. The money sure. for SSP was used to build those officers which you don't even need, that you cannot even now maintain. <laughs> eh? Those mm. officers, you know, if, if the money could have been used to build lecture halls, <laughs> then we could even say that KU would have now have space to admit more students. But the money was used to build offices, that does not even help you now. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, Bonamesh. I think uh, Dr. Ari has tried to uh, give you some answers. Okay. okay. Let me let me okay. see another person with another question. Uh, if there's no other person, I'll give it back to Lipsy. Lipsy had asked one question, so if there's no other person, I give it to Lipsy. All right, Lipsy, the floor is yours. Thank you, engineer. Right. Thank you, engineer, for another opportunity. Uh, uh, my question was still back on SRC because uh, I didn't hear Dr. Ari answering me well. Eh? Mm. Uh, I wanted to know how is he planning to deal with SRC because it seemed like a stumbling block 
to our achievements. And uh, I, if I remember very well, uh, I saw Dr. helping Socion to achieve his position in parliament. Why is he not using him as, as, a, as a way of uh, uh, getting us what we need? And then my other question is on the CBA, the, the, the other CBA, the 2021. 2021, 2025. Yeah, I hope you have put other allowances in that. It's not only about basic salary. We need other allowances uh, as, as loans. We have a lot of, uh, we, we need to have a lot of allowances, not only basic salary. Those are my two uh, questions and comment. Thank you. Oh, uh, thank you, Engineer Lipsy. I want to say that uh, let us understand um, how we negotiate CBS. Those allowances for you to include them in the CBA, the national CBA, they must first of all be factored in the recognition agreement. When I took over here, I found that there was a draft recognition agreement. This draft recognition agreement was executed in the year 2020, the year 2003. But last year, I made sure that now we have a recognition agreement that encompasses all the public universities in Kenya. In that recognition agreement, we categorically divided what should be negotiated at the national level and what should be negotiated at the chapter. At the national level now, with what we signed on 28th October, we are supposed to negotiate basic pay, house allowance, medical, commuter, book allowance, leave days, workload. Those ones are now supposed to be negotiated at the national level. Professorial allowance is also supposed to be negotiated at the national level. So you can realize that we have increased what should be now negotiated at the national level. Initially, we had only two, two items. But now, as we, uh, then, then at the national level, we have also now included that we should negotiate mortgage and canon. Because when we were negotiating the mortgage and canon at the national level, our social partner was saying, according to the existing recognition agreement, they are supposed to negotiate only two items, that is basic salary and allowance. But the proposal we are writing now, we have incorporated, we have incorporated all those issues have enumerated because now the recognition agreement states so. Even retirement age, we removed retirement age from chapters to the national level. The reason why we removed ret uh, retirement age from chapters is because we had confusion. Some chapters were negotiating for 65, 70, 74, and 75. That is the reason why we have this quagmire now, where universities are retiring lecturers at different ages. But if we have negotiation at the national level, then we are going to harmonize. Lipsy, you also talked about SRC. I want you to know that SRC is a constitutional body. And um, as a union, we can only do it now that the constitution is being changed. And we've taken our proposal. I'm very happy that even our brothers from O2 are speaking the same language. I want to say that as a labor movement, we have taken a position that SRC should be disbanded. And just give us two weeks because we are gathering. I told you that uh, we are going to meet as a labor movement so that we give our position on this animal known as SRC. We also have our colleagues who are in the labor movement and they are in parliament. We have lobbied them. And very soon, I want to tell members that you will get the position of the unions on SRC. All right, I have one question, uh, Dr. Ray. Dr. Ray, yes. um, we know very well that for every country to move forward in every sector, there's always supposed to be proper 
educational research, both in uh, social sciences and the, the so-called STEM, which I am mm. part of. What has was done so to convince the government to put more funding into research? Because a dawn will always be a dawn, but you can never be a dawn in the rest of your life if you don't have good research work. Because research is what moves and improves the dawnship status. So what has was been doing to convince for more uh, funding? Because we need better engineers, we need better doctors. For people to do PhDs in engineering in Kenya, most people try to go out so that they do the engineering outside. Yet, people can be doing research locally. And uh, okay. the same with doctors. What What is, uh, we call it, is it uh, NFR? Or mm. R N N R F and Narco Steel. What what how how what is the funding that is there, and how are people getting it? What has also been chipping in to assist members so that they can get it? That is one. And uh, concerning a, a PhD program that take maybe ten years to finish, I know of somebody who did master's degree at Nairobi University Engineering for eight years. What, you, what, what has Uwasu done uh, to at least to uh, help Commission for University Education to come up with regulation that will ensure people have good transition from undergraduate to master's and master's are not, should not take more than three years or four years given some limits and the same with PhD. Uh, I think that's what uh, I I've got you clearly. Uh, thank you very much, Lydia. I want to say that um, on research, the National Office appointed a committee that was chaired by Professor Kubasu. And we came up with a raft of recommendations that should be taken into account to improve scholarship in public universities. And that document I took it to Commission for University Education. One of the things that we recommended, we recommended as happens in South Africa that there should be a percentage, a percentage in that pay. Because if you check the Universities Act, you are supposed to do th two, three things. You're supposed to research, teach, research, and do community service. What the government is paying you is paying you for teaching. What we are asking, where is the percentage of this pay for doing research? Where's the percentage for community service? So that one we are putting in our proposal also. So that for us to encourage research, there should be allocation for a research fund. Because you cannot do a good research if you don't have funds. And that one will be recommended to the Minister of Education and uh, even Commission for University Education. I concur with you. As we speak now, colleagues do not have money to do research. When it comes to delay, <laughs> I want to say that people who are in developed world, you register for the graduate program and you're given everything. But here, even our uh, libraries are really equipped. We don't have supervisors. The reason why it's to this delay is because the number of lecturers is not commensurate with the number of students. We have so many students. So if now you supervise PhD students and you have 10, you are supposed to teach. You are supposed to do community service. You don't have time to attend to your student properly because you are also a human being, you are overworked. Hmm? So we should not blame our professors. But I'm trying to imagine if a professor was just left to mentor PhD students, hmm? then these students hmm, would finish faster. But what I'm asking universities again, 
Why do you over admit when you don't have lecturers to supervise postgraduate students? Hmm? So we are doing something, we are working. I have a committee here, the Education and Training Committee, that uh, came up with the recommendations that we presented, even on this merger, we presented our paper to the Ministry of Education. Even on CBC, we present the paper to the Ministry of Education. But guiding a government that is hell-bent on implementing any policy without even consultation is quite difficult. Because of the Committee for Education and Training came up with a policy document, eh? a guide to guide the ministry. We went to even to court. We did a paper. Today they have not even called us. But I hear they want to merge universities. What I keep on asking, what what would uh, what, how will merging two broke universities help quality of university education in our country? How? There's a very wrong misconception here in this country that if you are a professor, then you can manage the docket of education. <laughs> very much your pick. Thank you very much, Engineer. <laughs> Thank you for that. Thank you for that. I think, uh, is there any other question? One minute. Otherwise, um, Dr. Tari, I would like to thank you for coming uh, on to this webinar and agreeing to be hosted today by me, the one and only youngest engineer. I was somebody called me uh, junior, uh, ju uh, juvenile. <laughs> <laughs> do this, do this, uh, engineer, engineer Dolo. Yes. Uh, in township here, <laughs> you must have a big heart. I do. <laughs> because, because whether you are called juvenile, that will not make you a bad engineer. True. I have so, one. <laughs> somebody. I have, I have, yes. I have just one parting shot. Yes. Just a minute before you say it. Um, yeah. Linda, you have a question? I, I will answer it. I will ask it. Lipsy, you have a burning one? If it's not, we can organize another time and we'll ask it together. Yeah, yeah. Just, I wanted to know how much of the 8.8 uh, uh, is Uwasu getting? I think uh, Vera... That... Nah, that one was answered, Buana. You wait for, the, for, for, for them to finalize the court thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, <laughs> this is, just wait for it to be finalized. Okay? Okay, okay. Have a lovely night. All right. Uh, now, uh, Linda was saying, what is, how, was your, how was your first teleconference with Dons? Thank you very much, engineer. I think, I think today I've learned a lot. You know, when you see me, gentlemen, I'm, I'm uh, close to 60 years now. <laughs> when you people see me, you might think I'm a young man. I'm a very old man. This technology has surprised me this evening. Eh? And, and uh, engineer, I want to say that we should encourage this. I'm planning to I'm planning to host you if you give me time. We host you every uh, monthly, or in Month case there, in case there is a situation whereby the, you like after court, you can just sit and you can have a talk, tell, inform the members how it's going, something like that. But I'm, I'm, if we have time, you just schedule me in your calendar monthly in the evening like this, and we just have a, a show. I'll be very grateful. I'll do that. Uh, I want to thank you sincerely because this evening you've made me to interact with the dons. Two, I want to thank Uwasu members wherever they are. I know you are spread out throughout the globe. We should encourage this. Uh, I also want to say that we are doing a lot for our members and we're not tired. This is the only beginning chip we have. Let our members own this union. Whatever you want to be incorporated in this union, be free and say it. I have open door policy. Say it. Because today I'm here, tomorrow we'll not be here. 
but I want a union whereby one day I will say, this is what I did for my members. Because after my tour of duty, I will also go back to class. And I would like to leave a union that is strong and united. So, engineer, I want to buy your idea. Let us put it monthly. But if there is need, I am at your service. Because we serve here as one amongst people. Today I'm the Secretary General, the next day I'll go back to class. Much appreciated. I oh, think thank you very much. Vera has a burning one. Vera, one second. 30 seconds. Just a minute. Uh, Dr. Songa. Yes, Vera. What is your take on the, this thing called rationalization and harmonization happening at my place of work? All right, that's it. You know, let me tell you better. The rationalization and harmonization is good. So long as it does not compromise quality. You know, be before, before let, let us say, when universities had money, SSP. You Dr. Wasonga, Dr. Wasonga, you've not gotten my question. No, I'm getting it. I know it. You know which question I'm asking? I was very specific about my place of work. Yeah. Yes, it's not about the normal harmonization and mergers. It's the harmonization and rationalization that is happening in Moi. I know you know it. Can you make a comment hey, about it? Hey. Let us do this. Let the university management involve the union so that you can guide them. But, but they were never involved. What, what, what I heard is happening at uh, the School of Engineering. Yes. It's not professional at all. Because you cannot give an engineer four courses to teach. And you also have practicals. That will water the quality of teaching in that school. That one will be. Uh, I, I, I don't think even the engineering okay. board. Uh, I don't think even the engineering board allows that. And when I heard that, I called the university management. I told them what you are doing eh, is not professional. How can you teach focuses unless you just want to go there and read notes? But engineering, I know, you cannot lecture for units and a semester. Lips is an engineer there. Dolo, you are an engineer. Why can't you uh, advise the university managers? They are well advised. Yeah. But, uh, I think, uh, Vera, we will take on this issue. I think we can talk about now, uh, maybe let's say next week on Friday. Yes. We'll talk about uh, workload. If you workload, time, yes. Let's yes. have a workload next week on Friday. I can schedule a meeting for everybody. That's yeah, schedule a meeting. Members. It's okay. All right, because I think this is a burning issue on workloads, especially for engineers, is really uh, mm. much, and I think even for social sciences, it's still a burning issue. Mm. Otherwise, uh, Dr. I would like to thank you as you close this meeting for us, give us a parting shot, then I allow members to rest. Uh, I want to urge us to embrace this union. This is the only bargaining chip we have. Let members ask before was who came into being. What were members earning? This union has done a lot. Let us embrace it. And let members stop from being agency member. If you are an agency member, you are limited. I want to add all agency members to join the union. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good night, everybody. I will upload these videos later. Yes. Good night. Good night. Good night. Hey, 12.